Hey everyone, my name is Aaron Baker. I'm a developer here at Momentum Group. And in today's tutorial, we'll be recreating the speed dial React component in Bubble. Perfect. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is just set up our environment here. So I have my speed dial demo, and I'm going to add this plugin that actually updates the page on, um, sorry, reloads the page on any updates. So this is a plugin offered by AirDev and, and Zero Code. They're both good, uh, but the reason I like it is just because when I'm developing visually, as opposed to having to manually click that that, that bar up there, notifying me of a change, uh, it just automatically updates when there's a change on the screen. So let's go uh, over, I've already created the shell of the floating action button demo. So let's drop it on our screen here, just so we can watch it change as we update the page. So, oh, this is not in, I'm just going to update this to the responsive page really quickly. Okay, so I've updated the page to the new responsive, um, responsive settings. So let's grab a floating group because this is going to be a floating button. I'll just drag it on the screen there. Uh, it's going to be, oh, that's the wrong one. 72 by 320. Great. I'm going to drag this into there. So now we have our reusable element in this floating group. So I'll just go ahead and grab that floating group and we're going to push it to the middle of the screen. So let's go. Okay. So I've just made that float, that floating group a little bit bigger so I can drag that in there. Great. Now it's inside. We'll just push it to the edges and then we'll resize this group. Okay. We're bringing it in. Okay, it's a bit slow, but there we go. Then I'm going to push this floating group into the middle of the screen. So it's going to vertically float to both. Oh, sorry. Both. There we go. Uh, the layout, I'm going to push this into the middle. So let's go 600 because it's probably going to push to 1200. So it should appear in the middle of my screen. Let's switch over to the other top quickly. Great. Okay. So it seems to be updating. There's no buttons in there right now, but. Let's hold, head over to the reusable element now. So FAB demo, floating action button. And the first thing we're gonna do is drop our first button in there. So grab button, place it in there. And I'm gonna set it to a width and height of 65 by 65. And then I'm gonna just push it right there into the middle, 10 pixels up. So what I can do now to make it, to give it that round shape that we saw in Material Design's React component library, uh, I'm just gonna have to make this a rounded button. And then also it seems like there is a, a shadow there too. So let's go ahead and set that up. So we'll remove the style here. I'm gonna go down to roundness uh, because it's 65 by 65. To make it completely round, I just have to take the half of that but to make it easy, I'm gonna go 45 round this. I should make it perfectly round. Set to the middle, I'm gonna remove this text because it's actually a plus button. Yep, plus button there. Uh, so we'll add that as an image. So we'll just change the background style instead of flat color, I'm gonna to go to image and then I'm gonna upload my add button. All right, here we go. We have the app button loaded up. It's saved as an SVG because the files are small, which allows for less loading time when we have a production application. So I'm not gonna crop this. I want it to be in the middle, so we'll center that. And there we go. Then we have the button set up. For even faster development, what you can do uh, is actually set this up as a style. So as opposed to going through and creating each button separately, I like to set up styles beforehand because uh, it just allows me to build a little, a little bit quicker. And when you're actually in production, um, having your application reference the style as opposed to painting everything on the screen once the page is loaded is gonna allow for better performance. 
Okay, we have our style set up now. And just for you uh, all following at home, I'll just walk you through it really quickly. Uh, so how those styles are created. So we're gonna go to the background color. I'm gonna set my background color to the standard uh, color here that we have. I'm going to add a shadow. So let's set up the shadow style to outset. Um, there's gonna be a horizontal offset and we're just gonna change this box shadow color to black. So there we go, back, box shadow color is black. And another thing that we'll have to add is condition here that when this button is hovered, then we are going to set up the box shadow, shadow button to be nothing so it looks like the button is being pressed. So you'll get this little animation here where as you hover, the button looks like it's pressed. Cool. And for this button in particular, we're going to also add a condition here of the rotation angle. We'll set that up to 90 degrees. What that's gonna do is rotate that plus button on hover when this updates. Oh, okay, something's going on there. So let's debug this really quickly. So I have my button, my rotation angle, 90 degrees. Should it be 90 because that would be the same thing. It actually should be 45. Okay, so I've set that up to 45 now. And there we go. Okay, now we got the rotation going. Perfect. Okay, so now that you can see, you've seen how it's set up, I'm just gonna go ahead and change the style that I already have. So boom there. And then we'll add the four other buttons here. So what you can do quickly is either drag and drop those buttons into this uh, repeating group, or sorry, not the repeating group, into the group here, or you can just duplicate this button four times. Great, so I have my four submenu buttons up here. And I'm just going to change the style because I already have those set up. So the first one is copy, then save, then print, then share. So let's go and add those in. So this is going to be copy. Great. This will be save. Perfect. Print. and share. Cool. So what size are these buttons here? Uh, so that looks like they are, so these are 16 by 16. So let's go ahead and set those up as 24 by 24s. Oops. Ah, uh, that looks a bit small. Uh, let's try 35 by 35. That looks a bit better. Let's go ahead 35 by 35. So I didn't really like the 35 by 35. So I've gone ahead and changed them all to 40 by 40. I'm going to drag this one to the top. I'm going to select all of these and then we're going to equally distribute them vertically. Cool. Okay, so now we're all equal here. They're a bit off, so let's just center these by one to the middle. Perfect, now they have 16 by 16 on both sides. Nice, okay, so we have our buttons set up here. We have our preview here, so let's take a look. Nice. So that's pressing nicely. Oh, it looks like they're all rotating. So we'll have to fix that for this style. But you also see that they have the, the hover overlay there as well. So that's, that's nice that we have that set up. So let's go ahead and just change that style really quickly. Cool. Okay, so I've removed the rotation angle of these buttons. That way, they no longer rotate on hover. It's just the main floating action button. So our next step here is, okay, I like this setup. It looks great visually. How do we make these appear and reappear in that wave motion? Let's go over to some workflows. 
So I'm going to change these buttons so that they are not visible on page load. So they're all no longer visible on page load. Just our main button here. And then we are going to go, oh, let's rename these first so we know exactly which ones we are animating. So that's copy. This is save. Print. And then share. Brilliant. Okay, so we're going to go to workflow and then we're going to add uh, some animation here. So with the new responsive settings, uh, we actually have this uh, workflow or this action item do when a element is hovered. Great, so we'll click that one. So when the element is hovered, we're actually going to choose our button, which is the main button there. Could probably use a better name, but uh, sake of time. And we're going to go animate, animate an element here. And we're going to go, the first one is copy. So that's the first one we're going to animate. And I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to paste this. Oops. Paste that there. Paste that there. Paste that there. Now, the reason that I'm not all I'm not animating all of the buttons using one action uh, is just because they all appear at separate times. So if we head over to this to the reference, you can sort of see that this button is appearing first and this top button is appearing last. So they sort of appear in a wave motion and then disappear in that in a reverse wave. So when I'm stopping, when I stop hovering this button, this button is the one that actually disappears first, and then this disappears last. So let's go ahead and get that set up. So I have animate button copy, and I'm going to change this animation to fade out. Transition fade out, that looks right to me. Or actually, it should be an expand out. It sort of shrinks. Yeah, like that. Okay, and we're going to define a custom duration because this is the button that appears first. I'm going to have it shortest duration, and then this button will be the longest duration. So let's go expand out. Actually, sorry, this should be expand in because these are the button. This is the workflow when the buttons appear. Expand in. This would be expand in. This would be button save. Define a custom duration. We're going to go 400. This will be button print. Expand. Expand in. Custom duration, 600. And then for our last one here, share. And that's going to be expand in. And the custom duration is here is going to be 800. Great. And then for the reverse, we're going to add the condition when an element stops being hovered. And for this, we're actually not going to pick the button, but we're actually going to pick this whole group. Now, the reason being is because if we just had the button on hover, as soon as we go and select one of these buttons up here, they're going to disappear. Because Bubble's only looking at, okay, so this button's hovered. As soon as I leave that this zone, it's no longer hovered. So to have this effect of, now I can select these items, and then when I remove, they disappear, I'm going to have to have the action be set on when this FAB demo element is no longer hovered. Okay, so let's go to the workflow, and we're going to select the element button, the FAB demo, which is the actual group. And then what I'm going to do is copy these over, copy, paste, paste, paste. Great. Okay, now we're going to expand out because this is going to be the action where the buttons disappear. Out. Oops. Out. Okay, now the buttons are expanding out, 
And here we see that the copy button is appearing first and the share is appearing last. So I'm just going to set them up in the exact reverse order. So now it is the share button that expands out first. It'll be print, should be 400 milliseconds. Save 600 milliseconds. And Oh yeah, I guess the copy is there. Perfect. So this one's already set up. Um, now the reason I set them up in reverse order here, just a little tidbit, is Bubble is reading these action items left to right. So this is going to happen first, and then this is going to happen last. If I had just copied over this exact same order, but only changed the duration, you'll sort of see like a, a flash on the screen. It just won't look right. So you just have to take into consideration how Bubble is reading these action steps uh, when you're designing uh, some visual components like this with animation. So let's go over to the page here and see how that works. So I'm hovering, we have that beautiful little wave appear, disappear, let's go up. We can now hit those buttons and then remove from the group and then we're set up. Perfect. Actually, you know what? There is one thing that I have not changed yet, and that is to hold this button in rotation while I'm scrolling through here. So let's go and fix that now. So that when this button is hovered, when this stop being, it's being hovered, nope, sorry, let's go over to the actual button and set up that on the condition. So we're going to set up another condition here copy and paste that condition when this button is hovered. So we're going to change from this button to FAB demo is hovered. The rotation angle is there. And then we actually need to copy over this condition from the style as well. So let's go to edit style, see what that is. Copy condition, go back to our design, paste condition. I'll just take this expression and I'll pop it into here, delete this, and there we go. Brilliant. Okay, so let's go and view it in the app page now. And then great. So you can see now that this button holds this rotation angle. And as, as, soon, as soon as I remove it from the FAB demo group, it resets its state. Very cool. All right, so that has been the FAB demo in Bubble. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, please leave them below in the comments. Uh, or if you want to see us create anything else in Bubble, uh, let us know. Other than that, please like and subscribe, and we will see you again next week. Take care.